Last night we talked about a survey from the Woodrow Wilson National Fellowship Foundation that found that one out of three college graduates can't name a single right protected by the First Amendment. But 10% think the First Amendment protects their right to own a pet. What's more shocking than college graduates who can't name any of our First Amendment rights? A congressman who wants to take away our Second Amendment rights. Congressman Eric Swalwell is one of the 37,968 Democrats running for president. You might remember Swalwell from the time he proposed that the government should confiscate all semi-automatic rifles from law-abiding American citizens. And when an American citizen said, yeah, that ain't gonna happen, Swalwell said, you know the government has nukes, right? So you're gonna have to turn your guns in or else, you know, face the nukes. Sounds like a great guy, right? Well, yesterday, Swalwell tweeted, quote, NRA Twitter is losing its mind with how is Swalwell going to take guns from law-abiding owners? Spoiler, I'm not. I'm organizing with the moms and students, and we're going to change the law. Weapons of war will be no more. Hashtag ban and buy back. Hashtag end gun violence. Congressman Swalwell, sir, you realize that even if you change the law, you are still forcing currently law-abiding gun owners to turn in their guns or risk becoming felons. It's still taking away guns, even if you use the power of law to do it. Making it law doesn't make it right. You are proposing the government take away AR-15s from law-abiding citizens. You actually hashtagged that tweet, ban and buyback. Buyback is just a silly euphemism for mandatory gun confiscation. Sir, you're telling lies. On CNN, just a few days ago, you said you would throw people in jail if they didn't let the government confiscate their rifles. Here's the thing about all of this. The most dangerous leftists are the ones who say one thing and do exactly the opposite. Do what they deny. Eric Swalwell claims he doesn't want to take away your guns, but his actions prove that his words are lies. We all want to solve gun violence. We all want to stop mass shootings. But if the left is looking for practical solutions, why do politicians like Swalwell ignore the practical solutions? If you want to reduce gun violence, then abolish gun-free zones. 98% of the mass shootings in the past 50 years in our country have happened in gun-free zones, where killers know that nobody has a firearm to defend themselves. Churches and schools and concerts are all gun-free zones. If you want to reduce gun violence, then arm qualified teachers, arm security guards in schools and government buildings and churches. We guard our money in banks with guns. Why wouldn't we guard our children with guns? If you want to reduce gun violence, then encourage law-abiding citizens to conceal carry. The areas with higher rates of concealed carry permit holders have lower rates of violent crime. In fact, in Texas, Concealed carry permit holders have a lower rate of crime than police officers. If you want to reduce gun violence, then demand institutional accountability. The left tells us that government will protect us. But in so many mass shootings, the reason the shooter got to the point where he could commit his attack was because, for example, in Sutherland Springs, the Air Force failed to report his domestic violence conviction. Or in Parkland, the sheriff mishandled calls about the shooter's violence, or the FBI ignored tips that the shooter was planning to commit that attack. Time and time again, it's the government institutions that the left promises they'll keep us safe that fail to keep us safe. If Congressman Swalwell were serious about ending gun violence, he wouldn't target AR-15s, which are used in less than 1% of gun murders. He would enact practical reforms that we know work, but he refuses to do that. And that's my final point.